periodic table. What is a periodic table? The periodic table is a collection of all the different elements arranged in a specific order. The periodic table puts the elements in order of increasing atomic number into seven horizontal rows, which are called as periods. There are also 15 vertical columns in the, in the periodic table, which are actually called as groups. The elements properties show regular trends going up or down these periods. Okay. And uh, there are actually two different versions of the periodic table. In 1869, the Russian chemist Dmitry Mendeleev published the original periodic table, which was arranged based on atomic weights. But actually, it had several drawbacks. Um, say, for example, it wasn't able to explain why some of the elements having higher atomic weight were placed before elements having lower atomic weights. And also, the noble gases do not have a place in his periodic table. Elements with uh, different chemical elements uh, with different chemical properties are placed in the same group, while with same properties are placed in different groups. So based on um, uh, based on these drawbacks, scientists came forth with another uh, periodic table, which is actually called as a modern periodic table, uh, where they arranged the elements in increasing atomic number rather than increasing atomic weights. Okay, so in the modern periodic table, we have a total of seven periods in 18 groups. Okay, and again, the periods are the rows and the groups are actually called, the columns are actually called as the groups. Okay, so you can divide the periodic table into three different sections. The first, the representative column, which is the column represented in green. And the second one is the transition elements, which are mostly metals. And the third one is the inner transition elements, which means it is going to go inside the transition. It's going to find a place inside the transition elements. Okay, the represented, the, um, in the representative elements, you have the alkali metals, which is going to be the first column. And the alkali earth metals are going to follow it. And then on the other side, you have a total of six columns. And um, the last column is actually the noble gases, such as the helium, neon, argon, xenon. And then you have the halogens. This is the halogens. And then in the inner transition elements, uh, you have the lanthanide series and the actinide series. And there are totally 14 columns in here. Okay, And there is a reason why... Um, why the inner transition elements have 14 columns, whereas the transition elements have only 10 columns in it. Okay, metals and non-metals um, is another way to classify the elements. A metal is any element whose atom tend to lose electrons during chemical reactions, whereas a non-metal is an element whose atoms tend to gain electrons during a chemical reaction. Okay, so one trend that can be followed in the periodic table is as you go from left to right of the periodic table, the non-metallic character increase. So uh, in other words, uh, if you look into this diagonal right here, everything on the left side of it is actually, uh, they are actually metals, whereas everything on the right side of it, which is this area, are non-metals. Okay. okay, now what are the general properties of metals and non-metals? Metals, as we know, they are good conductors of heat and electricity, whereas non-metals, they are poor conductors. Metals can be malle malleable and ductile. Malleable means it can be beaten into thin sheets, um, and ductility means it can be stretched into wires, whereas non-metals, they are, they are brittle, which means they can be broken down. Um, metals, they possess metallic luster, whereas non-metals, they do not possess any kind of luster. Metals are usually solid at room temperature. Uh, the only exception that we have is uh, mercury. This is mercury. And non-metals are mostly solids, liquids, or gases at room temperature. Metals usually have one to three valence electrons. Maybe later down the chapter, we'll talk about what are valence electrons. Non-metals usually have four to eight valence electrons. Metals have the tendency to lose electrons and form positive ions, whereas non-metals try to gain electrons and they form negative ions. 
Now let's go on to electronic configuration and valence electrons. What is an electronic configuration? Electronic configuration is the arrangement of the electrons in different organic, uh, in different energy levels. Okay. So say for example, if you take an atom, atom can have different electronic energy levels and they are said to be uh, level one, level two, level three. Okay, so the maximum number of electrons that like level one can accommodate is only two and level two can accommodate eight and level three can accommodate 18 electrons. But what is more important about this valence electrons? It is these valence electrons that's going to decide the properties of the different elements. So the chemical reactivity of the elements depends on the order of these electrons in the different energy levels and the valence electrons play a big role in this. Okay, so if you take the representative elements, the first column right here, okay, which is the first group, uh, they have a tendency to donate only one electron. Okay, whereas when you took when you take the second column, which are called as the alkaline earth metals, they can donate a total of two electrons and become a dipositive ion. But if you look into um, noble gases, noble gases has a tendency to accept only one electron.